Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome. Happy Friday. Isn't it nice to have a nice Friday? Nice and early. Um, <laughs> it is early for us. I want to let you all know, but of course, it is not early for Sandra, who's here <laughs> with us today. Um, she is physically in a completely different part of the world, which is so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just want to, uh, while we're kind of letting everyone get ready and get in, I just want to say hi to everyone. I hope you're all doing pretty good. I know it's been quite a, gosh, it's been a week. It's been like a couple of, you know, it's been a year, man. <laughs> <laughs> we are definitely, um, we are definitely enjoying, I think, the time that we have if we are drinking some wine and more importantly, um, you know, making some friends, making some friends via Zoom in other parts of the world. Um, so hello, I, I'm just hello, hello, hello to everyone. Um, so I'm very, very excited for all of you to join me today. We are so lucky, so, so lucky to have Sandra here with us. Um, I am a big fan of the beautiful wines. She is in the Douro right now. So this is where she is from. Uh, Wine and Soul is one of her projects, uh, her main project that we're tasting through today, but she's gonna also talk about Chocopala, which is another project that she um, is part of her family and within her, <laughs> her realm. And, um, but mostly we're just gonna kind of let her tell us about, um, you know, what it's like to be her, to be a female winemaker, which I think is pretty, badass. Um, and also, uh, we are tasting three of her incredible wines. So just so in case y'all have it, which I hope some of you do, we have got um, the Guru coming in first, uh, beautiful, the white wine, so it should be chilled. And then we have got the Manuela is going to be wine number two that we're going to talk about. And then we have got the character right here. So if you are like me and you like having everything spread out, I've got all three glasses ready to go, <laughs> but I will be enjoying to drink them, uh, enjoying drinking them while we talk with Sandra. And Sandra also very, very excitedly has some, uh, some stuff to share with us in terms of visuals. So she's got, I'm, I don't even know what they are. I'm really excited <laughs> to see. <laughs> but at any rate, um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and, um, and turn this over. Welcome, Sandra. How are you today? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm also fine, and, and it's a great pleasure to be here with you. Uh, I'm really missing to visit US, and especially to because you know it's a special in the market that's in my heart. And normally, I go very often to visit clients, and and thanks God, I have very good friends. So uh, I'm really missing the, all the all the energy and and your your culture and your your uh, your cheers. So, I, uh, so so I hope very soon I can come back soon uh, to visit you and to promote the wines there because I think it's much more important. So I but, actually I got to meet you when you were here in person. Um, mm -hmm. Gosh, is that a couple of years ago now? Yes. <laughs> But how often normally would you be visiting the United States? Uh -huh. Normally three, four times a year. Oh my goodness. So yes, but of course some shorter visits or other, it could be three weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, so it depends on the part of the, on, the, on the season, but normally three or four times a year. So, it, so for us, it's really an important market that we've been growing uh, slowly, but consistently. And, and so it's really important for us to, to create the connections and to create the relationships and uh, because wine needs its emotions and I think yeah. it's really important to to be able to spread these emotions and to create loyalty and um, and to have the feedback immediately it's so important. I think that um, I mean one of the things that I think we take for granted being in the United States is that we have we get all of this beautiful wine and we don't really <laughs> get to understand quite as well you know, what you go through, what it's like over there, what your seasons are like and how it differs from, for example, most of us are in California or at least in the United States. The, uh, being a winemaker, I think is a different kind of uh, concept, um, mm -hmm. not really an action, but I think there is a, um, an understanding of winemaking as sort of the, the Napa Valley celebrity kind of winemaking, whereas there's so much more that kind of goes into it. And always the stories of the winemakers, I think are kind of one of the most um, exciting parts to hear about. So. Mm -hmm. Do you, should we start with our one of the tastings? 
Yes. Okay. Let's, yeah. And then I'd like to, I'd like to hear a little bit about the history of wine and soul and how you got started. <laughs> so it's a long story. Um, so I'm, um, I'm, I'm a daughter of my parents. Uh, at a certain point, they decided to change their lives. So my mother is Swiss and my father was a Navy officer. In fact, he was traveling all over the world with NATO. He was, a, a, um, I don't know, an almirant from, from, the, from the Navy. And, and so he was traveling a lot. And at a certain time, he decided he wants to be more with the family and, and to build a project together. So during the 80s, uh, my parents decided to buy a property and to, to, to create our own project. And so since little girl, I was really in touch with the, with the land and with the, with the countryside. And I always had in mind that I would love to build or to, to, to work in, in the countryside. So not, never thinking to be a winemaker. But then step by step, we, uh, my parents bought this beautiful property very close by Lisbon. Uh, it's Quinta Choca Pila. And it was, it was, it has been fantastic years. So since the eighties, so my father restored, rebuilt and replanted all the vineyards. And still when I was studying agronomy and specializing in viticulture, uh, because my, my goal was to help my family. Uh, uh, I was, uh, and in the end of specialized viticulture, I decided to study enology in Italy. So I, I moved one year in Italy. Ooh, made my, in Piacenza, so north of Italy. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. <laughs> yes, because when when I was studying, I decided it's, it's beautiful, and then I, my while I, where I feel more peace and 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 I really love is the nature. So growing grapes, it's it's amazing, and to understand the years and understand the, the different terroirs and different climates, it's really beautiful. But I think producing a wine which can which it's a, it's your own uh, how you you feel that that that's part of the land and it's your your own interpretation of that of that land and and i think it's a product that you can share with others and i think that's the most beautiful things of the wine it's something that it's you can share and and also gives a different level of, of, of emotion for others and also can change a moment for others and create a nice, nice relationships and nice moments for everybody. So I think being a winemaker, it was was really to, to be able to produce a product that could be uh, aged for a long time mm -hmm. and to and to be shared with others. And so I when I finished my studies in in uh, in in enology in, in Italy, this was in '99. Okay, I realized that uh, because while I was studying agronomy, I was making lots of internships in all over Portugal, the, ma the main regions of Portugal. But I realized that the only region I didn't know it was the Douro <laughs> Valley. Really, <laughs> I'm Douro is really far, not really far, but it was for for a person in Lisbon. It was very far. It would take us a long time, like eight hours driving until the Douro. Not really? anymore. Not anymore because we had to <laughs> wait. But then back then, you know, 21 years ago, it was uh, uh, it was almost eight hours driving. So wow. I, I had a friend, I, some friends that had properties in the Douro, and I asked for internship. Um, and this was in 99. So, and that's how I made the first harvest uh, in the property called Quinta Valdona Maria, which is a very nice property from Cristiano Van Zeller. And, and I fell in love with the region. So, uh, and so I, I, after that harvest, um, he hired me. So I was the chief winemaker over there. Mm -hmm. And wow. in 2000, uh, I said to my father, it's the time now to make our own wines because until then we were selling the grapes. So my father was a bit afraid and a bit, oh, really, what do you think? Because it's a very competitive world. And then I said, no, we should start making our experiments. And so we re rebuilt a very tiny uh, winery at Chocapaila. And I started in 2000, 2000. In 2000, okay, wow, yeah. And 
and we started making micro vinifications and the first year we just bottled 10,000 bottles and then step by step we've been growing and luckily now in, in Chocopile we are producing around 200,000 bottles. Still small but focused yeah. in, in very classic, very um, wines with a lot of identity of the place because it's Atlantic climate. So I, I, I love that you talked about that because I'm so curious. Um, did your, when your father was planting Chacopala, um, was he selecting grapes specifically because they were native grapes? Like how did he make his selection? Yes, it was, it was funny because he was not an agronomist. He was, you know, he had no, not so much um, experience in wine or, or any, almost any. So it was a very um, experimental, he, he, of course he planted all the, the indigenous grapes, but also he, he brought grapes from other regions from Portugal and even abroad. So we also planted a little bit of Syrah, a little bit of Cabernet, but the main are the Portuguese and indigenous varieties are the focus there. Yes, and <laughs> is that the same with obviously wine and soul? So wine and soul is your Douro yes. winery. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So in 2001, so um, so I was working between Douro and 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 uh, and Chacapalha, and in 2001, of course, I've met already uh, <laughs> my, uh, George, who's not my my husband. He's he's also a winemaker. He was working at that time at Newport, and and in 2001, which was the year that we were going to get married, we decided that we wanted to start making our own project. Mm -hmm. And so that's how it started, Wine and Soul. So the dream, with the dream just to produce one wine uh, from all vineyards. And then step by step, we've been growing. But probably I will start showing some uh, images of the Doro. Is it fine? Yes, that would be great. Absolutely. You understand? Okay, because today we will be focused more in the Doro. So I don't have the pictures of Shaka Pala, but hopefully at that time. <laughs> Another time, we'll just have to do this again and just do the check <laughs> <Okay. laughs> And we can talk all about the uh, Lisboa area, which is, I mean, like you're saying, it's a completely different climate and you have completely different wines from both places, right? Yeah. Yes, so um, it's, it's really uh, an opportunity. The Douro wines, I'm, I'm, I am very excited, especially because the, with the Douro, I feel like you don't, I don't think a lot of people associate white wines with the Douro. So I, I, <laughs> it's wonderful. Yeah. I'm very happy to have this here uh, and have you kind of show about it and talk about it. Okay, go ahead. Now, so just to explain a little bit of Portugal. So Portugal is a very tiny country. So we located in the Southwest of Portugal, of, of the Europe. And we just have an idea. We, we just have uh, 500, 560 kilometers like uh, long and only 200 kilometers why? So we are a really tiny country, but you can see here the different wine regions. So many different wine regions with very different styles and characters because of the climates and also the soil types. So we can divide a little bit like uh, this, uh, this area where we have a lot of Atlantic Ocean influence. So here we have the Minho, Vinho Verde, the, the Bajada, Down. And, uh, and Lisbon, of course. Um, this, it's areas that we have a lot of, of rainfall, uh, a lot, very uh, mild climate, very lots of humidity. So the cycles are long and so it provides to have higher acidity. And also this, the type of the soils here are very different, more on clay calcareous. Mm -hmm. uh, here in Vinho Verde it's granite, but it's the exception. So it provides to have very, uh, wines with a lot of acidity, freshness, nice fruit. And this is where it's in Lisbon, where it's located Chocapalha. That's why it explains a lot the style of Chocapalha. Then we have here the southern uh, wines or southern regions, which are really plains, so there's not many mountains. And here normally it's very warm um, and, and, and cold in the winter, but very warm and, and lots, not so much rainfall, so it's very dry. And here on this area, on the interior, so closer to the, to the Spanish border, we have Trazos Montes, Douro, where we will show the more, more precisely, and, and Beiras and down. Here it's mountain area. So it's, on, down here, it's where we have most of our mountains. 
they are not so 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 high uh, heavy as you have in the US. The highest mountain we have here it's only one thousand four hundred meters more or less here in the down. Um, but but here it's so it's very cool in the winter and and very warm in the summer because we have a lot of influence from from Spain from the continental yeah. climate. And, and this is Douro, so, wow. <laughs> so just to explain, Douro it's the oldest uh, wine region demarcated with special rules, so from 1756. Uh, it's a very big uh, wine region, it's over 200, uh, no, 46,000 hectares uh, of, of area of vineyards, so it's, it's very, very big. And it's we have the the river coming from Spain until until the, mm -hmm. the Atlantic Ocean, and so you can see it's all mountains and all the the all the vineyards mostly were were crafted on the mountains. So we we at the Douro the main the big difference is that there is no soil. You, we have rock, and we <laughs> have to destroy the rock, uh, which is schist in majority. Uh, predominantly uh, and can break easily. That's why we can we can break and and build these walls in order to create these little terraces to plant the vineyards. And so these are images of very beautiful vineyards. Oh. Fortunately, these these are not ours, <laughs> <laughs> but they're beautiful. But, uh, yes, they are beautiful because we are not located in the Douro the uh, river close to the Douro River. We are in the other a small river, which is Pinhão. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right, because there are multiple rivers that obviously feed into the Douro. Exactly. But are the vineyards near your, um, the Pinhão, are, are they as steep as the ones around the Douro? Yes, or they are, or even more. Really? So the, the, the biggest difference is that, and that's why when we started Wine and Soul, we prefer to, to, to establish in Pinhão area, in Pinhão Valley area, exactly because um, we, we believe that it's one of the best areas because close by the river, you, and you can imagine, there's much more humidity. Um, uh, there's not so, it's, it's very, it's not so extreme amplitude, thermic amplitudes as other, you know, because it's more mild uh, okay. in terms of temperatures. So, and, and we believe much more on the, on the tributaries that we have more extreme uh, temperatures, so it can be warmer, but it can be cooler. So sometimes in the in the summer, we can have almost 20 degrees Celsius, the difference between day and night. And yeah. this is really important for our wines. Is there and, a big temperature difference between um, along the Pinhau and then along the Douro? Is it quite that dramatic yes. or? No, it's not, yes, it's That's different. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> <laughs> And that's why when we started in 2001, we had this dream of doing something together. Uh, you have to think that um, at that time, majority of the wines being produced in the door were port wines. So uh, we, we, we belong to a new generation, not anymore because not, you're not young anymore, but, but uh, at that time we're, we're really a, a revolutionary uh, generation coming to the door. So about, we were like 10, 15 new winemakers that were hired for different uh, properties. And, and uh, the good thing is that we were with really different and uh, open-minded and, and new ideas for, for the Douro and with a lot of energy. And also we were, and we are still very good friends. And this is really what made really different because we were sharing a lot our experiences or if you, and if, or if we have any problems, we can, we would help each other. And I think that's what made Doro different. Uh, and, and it suddenly um, shown very great wines uh, because there was a, lots of, of uh, we were really united and we are uh, because we really need each other to, 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 pr to promote Doro and to produce better wines each year. So the group that you're talking about, which I think is awesome, it kind of sounds like a, a class, right? Like a university uh -huh. kind of, um, but was, <laughs> that's what I'm associating it with. No, like, but it is, it's true. In fact, most of them, they studied together. I, yeah. I didn't because I'm from Lisbon. So I studied in University of Lisbon. Yeah. But majority of the, the remaining, well, 
friends and the other winemakers that we belong to our group were from the university from the Doro and they studied awesome. together. So, you know, they are friends. Yes. Yeah. Even if we are competitors nowadays, but it's a good competition. That's good. Like making each other better. And was the general idea of that time as that part of that generation, mm -hmm. um, was the focus, was there an intentional focus towards moving to, to um, light wines as opposed to port? Or was that just um, kind of... No, yes, I think uh, when we were hired and when we, the, you know, the port wine was, um, was suffering a lot in terms of sales. So the demand of ports were decreasing. And, uh, and so there were a lot of remaining grapes that um, didn't have the value or people were not uh, using them uh, as they could. So, um, and so it created an opportunity to, to use that grapes and to create a, a, a fantastic product, which, yeah. which was not allowed. You know, I have to tell that um, because of, of the rules of, of port wine until 86, uh, because it was not allowed to produce still wine in the Douro Valley. This was the protection of port wine, you know? Um, but because when we entered to European uh, com community, um, it was not allowed to have mon monopolies, uh, oh. and, and the port wine was like considered like a monopoly. So, uh, so it was the time that was a, people were able to produce other products besides port wine. And did, sorry, did that mean that no one in the port they weren't allowed to? But did people kind of produce it anyway? They really didn't. No, no, they were not allowed. They were not allowed. Yeah. Or we, with the name Doro, <clears throat> they could produce, for instance, there's examples of Barcavelle or other yeah. products, very classic, but they couldn't say Doro. They had to say, uh, they were uh, Vinho de Mesa, you know, so it were not mm -hmm. DOT. Got it. And, and this changed a lot. So, of course, they, but at that time, there were not no winemakers or they were not still uh, with, with the knowledge to, mm -hmm. to do still wine because there was no tradition. So I think it was uh, amazing that we, we were so... Uh, um, lucky you know to to start I think in the perfect moment because there was this demand of new winemakers mm -hmm. to produce and with the knowledge so we were hired from different parts of the country and also from 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 the world there was one a very famous winemaker from Australia other from California or from Germany or they were hired for different properties so so this is our wine little soul. winery. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, so wine and soul, it, we are established here in a very small village called Val de Mendige, right in the heart of the Pignan Valley, because we believe that part of the, the Douro, it's, it's very classic, and it was very classic to produce the most re uh, notable um, ports, especially vintage ports, and we wanted to, to start uh, to buy grapes on that area. So that's why first we bought this winery and okay. we rebuilt it. Uh, and yes. This is me and George. <laughs> so, oh, and so that's this, the wine for tasting later. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we started in 2001 with this dream of producing one wine and then step by step uh, things were, were changing and we, there was opportunity to buy other vineyards and and we had the dream to produce other style of wine. So we, we, we have been growing, but very, very step by step. So when we prefer to go slowly than, than faster. And Great. this is our team. There's missing some, but we are a small team. There's missing some people from the, from the vineyards, yeah. uh, but it's a young team and team, very energetic team and, and uh, especially and very local. So. All of them, they are from, from, especially from the village or this, um, and very, wow. or very close by. And for us, it's important. This. And this is a part of the Pintage Vineyard. So this was the first vineyard we bought. So in 2001, we had this dream of producing one wine from very old vineyards with a, a very good location and very good exposure. And, but, but uh, for us, it was important in order to have a good balance of, of uh, hours of sun uh, and good ripeness, it was important to have altitude in order to compensate the heat. 
So our vineyards are located around 400 meters, 450 meters, um, in order to have these cooler breezes, especially in the morning and in the end of, 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 of in the evening. So you see it's very old vines, the majority of our vineyard. This is Pintas Vineyard as well. How old and were they when you bought it? We bought when it was 70 years old. Now uh, it's 90 years old. Wow. So you've never replanted it. You bought it as an old vineyard. And then yes, yes, it was 70 years old. So we really were focused in, in, in dedicate and, and, and explore this because we believe that old vineyards in the Dora world are amazing in terms of diversity, mm -hmm. in terms of, of, of uh, um, um, uh, density of plantation. And so, so we decided that we should, and especially on that time, there was a big pressure of uh, tearing out these old vineyards and planting vineyards that could be mechanized. Mm -hmm. And we were like so sad seeing all these tractors and bulldozers destroying these walls and these vineyards because it was an heritage that we were missing, you know, we were going to, to miss. So we started to be focused buying one hectare here, another hectare there, and, <laughs> and like this, uh, and creating our wines uh, with this immense diversity. And, and what we have seen along of these years is that, especially with Pintas, it's, it's, a, it's, a vineyard, it's a wine made from a single plot with only three hectares. Uh, with the very specific um, inclination and, and altitude and, and with more than 40 varieties, you know, I know this is very, very probably strange, but in, um, it's, it's typical in the Douro Valley that uh, in the old vines we can have 20, 30, 40 varieties all in the really? same pot. So yeah. do you differentiate between them or is it really more of a field blend when you're making the wine? A field blend, yes. yes yeah. we, because, and it's lovely because really it's, it's a, what we like to do, it's wines that reflect the, the, the terroir and the, the land. So it's really what comes from the, from the spot. So this is, a, and what we have seen, nature is, is beautiful and it's really perfect because we have very different varieties, all planted mixed, so they are uh, they are really aleatory planted, um, but they and and they have different cycles if they are planted separately. Mm -hmm. But when they are co-planted like this, the the cycles tend to to be to be more really? similar. <laughs> and this is, Interesting. No, but this is, I think it's, I think that it's not easy to explain um, academically, but, but it's um, natural, but it's, it's nature working because mm -hmm. if you plant, if you think a plant, what's the, what's the, the mission of the plant? It's mm -hmm. to create seeds, you know, for, for, for having continuation of the, the species of, of yeah. the plant, you know? Yeah. So if they don't have the flowering season on the same time, uh, if they have a decalage of two weeks or three weeks, that sometimes it happens if we have separated um, varieties, uh, they will not be pollinized. So you won't have uh, any fruit. So yeah. it's really it's really interesting, and and I think in, and the idea of planting. Uh, field blend this was it was not only in portugal uh, all over europe it was it was normal to do um field blends and this i think in case of the doro valley it was because of the, the business the business was dominated by mm -hmm. by the um, how do you say the shippers that would uh, would come to the Douro only after the harvest because they didn't own any vineyards. So they would come to the Douro after the harvest and they would buy the port if, if they liked or not. But if it would be a bad year, you know, if they had a vineyard only with Toriga Nacional, for instance, which is very sensitive variety, the production would be tiny, tiny. So it would be a disaster. And I think, I think it, this was a very, how do you say, empiric way for them to protect themselves they would um graft varieties from all yeah. over they would brought from from part different parts of europe and they would graft and and that's it that's how we have now around 250 different grapes varieties in portugal
That's so, that's absolutely. And, and so many of them are really just native there, or at least they're in, they're just not, you don't see them anywhere else. I know that we're starting in California. I feel like you're starting to see a few more of the Portuguese varietals. I think some people are trying with uh, Chiriga here, but, um, but really it's, that's part of what makes these wines so exciting. There's all these grapes that people have never heard of, but also kind of what makes it scary. So for example, what do we have in the Guru? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Guru to start tasting. So Guru, it's a very special wine. So uh, it's it's a white wine that uh, we were dreaming for many years to produce a white wine in the Douro. So the first edition was in 2004. And uh, this is a, a white wine coming from the highest slopes of the Douro. So as you have seen, Douro is a mountain area. So uh, the advantage of, of being in a mountain, you can search for for grapes on the highest altitudes to provide more acidity, low, uh, slower um, season, and uh, and um, and having a very good phenolic maturation, but with a longer cycle. Mm -hmm. So this, so we were looking for many years for the perfect place, perfect spot. To, to, to buy these grapes in the, in the beginning and then we been buying the, the, the vineyards. Mm -hmm. And we found very old vineyards that were used to produce white port. So this is a field blend again, okay. but only four varieties. Okay. Um, so it's Viozinho, Rabigato, Codga, and Goveio. In the end, I will pass it <laughs> right with the variety. But everyone got that, right? <laughs> You know those. Oh, just those. That's fine. <laughs> very easy. Very easy. You know, it's uh, <laughs> so. And I think this blend, you know, the, the individual each this one, this varieties, you know, they provide something different. For instance, Habigato, it's a very high on acidity, but uh, very lean. Um, yeah. <laughs> so not so much ar aromatically, but it's very good for giving acidity and and and, and the end of mm -hmm. the palate. And Codga do Lirinho and, and Goveio provides mouth filling. They are more neutral in the aromas, mm -hmm. but um, they are very good on structure, on texture. And, and uh, the Riviozinho, it's the more aromatic. So it can it's be- beautiful. It smells perfect. amazing. And I think the secret also from this wine, it's that the region that we, we, we bring this, uh, um, where they come from, the, these grapes, uh, it's the it's the area of transition of soil. So main, mainly Douro, it's limited by the schist, but we have the influence of the granite coming from from all over. Mm -hmm. So in the borders of the Douro, we have some granite, and here on this on these vineyards, we have some vineyards with 100% schist, others have slightly 10% granite, mm -hmm. others are 100% granite. And we wow. ferment them separately because they have different ripening points. Wow. Each, each mm -hmm. parcel, because this is, it's, this is a blend of eight different tiny parcels, just very, very close by each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and we ferment them separately and uh, in barrel, but mainly use barrels. Okay. And, and normally the fermentation is about uh, um, two months, very slowly at low temperatures. Uh, we have a cool, cool cellar, and and after stay about more six months in contact with the lees, uh, in order to do batonage and to extract a little bit. Uh, on the so palate. you leave it on the leaves, obviously, yes. for a little bit of that texture and, and flavor. Um, really quickly, I just want to address a question that came up um, from Venkat. Uh, I think that what she was referring to in terms of the the vines needing other vines to pollinate was not exactly what you were saying. What you were saying is just that the general pollination cycle, if vines were flowering at different times, they might not get as much attention as others. Um, so I think that it wasn't that the vines are non-hermaphroditic. Is that correct? No, 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 no. Yeah, they're hermaphroditic vines. But he has a good question here. So he was curious, and this is going to step back a moment to Pinchas, and maybe we want to um, talk about this when we talk about the wine too, but he's wondering how you figured out how many uh, varietals were in the vineyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have been identifying, you know, it's uh, it's been a hard work and, and very expensive as well. We, we are not uh, we are not identifying uh, with the DNA, but, but ampelographic, so we are fortunate that we still have old people that used to work in Casa do Doro, which is an institution that were were controlling the Doro, and these old old 
uh, persons that were working there, they used to go to the vineyards to identify the varieties and to define if the classification of that vineyard. So they can, uh, by, the, by seeing the leaves and the, and the, wow. the bunch, they can decide, they, they can uh, decide which I variety it is. Because I can't, I, I, normally I can identify like 10, 15 maximum. And sometimes I mean- That's amazing. <laughs> no, because it's, it's hard. Yeah. And so they come, uh, normally every year we, we do a little plot, but still it's missing a lot because it takes a lot of time. Yeah, I, you know, and it's all manual. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's really intense. <laughs> yes. yes. But I just, um, I think this, I really love this white wine. I think for those of you who have it and are tasting it, um, I just want to express how beautiful I think this is to you. <laughs> um, I do I do get those aromatics on, and the acidity is so beautiful on this. I think this has um, everything you kind of want in a white wine. It has this really bright um, aspect to it, but this lovely texture and just a gorgeous aroma, I think coming right off of it. Very sort of like lime and kefir lime and kind of like just beautiful um, citrus notes, but also this lovely weight to it. Uh, it just kind of hits all the wonderful it's delicious. <laughs> Thank you. No, I think yeah, it's a thanks it's, special, you. it's a special wine, and I think this is an example that uh, Doro is so diverse and so rich, and still we feel that we, there's so much to, to discover. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's so we are so grateful to be to be able to to work in this land, and and we have so much. Um, ideas and so yeah. hopefully we can do it all that, that we have in the in the mind on our minds. Um, the blue is really a very mineral, very textural, yes. uh, very pure, and uh, and it's fantastic with pairing with with, with an amazing dish. I can tell. It, there's just so much versatility to it, and I, I do. There's almost like a saline um, minerality too that I got at the finish, but the minerality is really lovely. Yes. Um, is this picture of your vineyards? Or? Yes. So now we are passing to Manuela. So okay. to explain, in 2009. So until until then, we were producing vintage Guru in 2004, and then we started to buy other vineyards and we created the character, which mm -hmm. are. I will explain you further uh, uh, afterwards. But in 2009, there was a big opportunity that we could buy uh, a property from George, George's family. So George is a, from a very old family of the Doro, um, mm -hmm. the fifth generation on producing port wine. And, wow. and, he, and his great, great grandfather, in my opinion, was one of the visionaries of the Doro because during phylloxera time, which which was this uh, plague that affected all over Europe, and in the Doro was mid 1800s, um, and and destroyed and, and killed all the vineyards, he decided to to buy many properties that were being abandoned, and and so at a certain point he had more than 30 properties in the Doro. Wow. Uh, but majority in Pinhao Valley, that's, that's, um, that's the, the predominantly was there. And so uh, we were lucky enough that through the generations, some of the vineyards were in, the, in, in George's uh, father. And in 2009, we were able to buy this property. So this property is, uh, is located very close by Pinhao. Okay. But as, a, uh, as we have about 70 hectares, I never know in acres. God, oh, that's okay. Don't worry. Neither do yeah. I. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but only 20 hectares of vineyards. The rest, and that's the most beautiful for us, it's the forest. So we oh. have these amazing old walls that you can see. They are pre phylloxeric walls that, that were. So, how, so these are like hundreds of years old, the walls? Yeah, the walls are. Okay more than 200 years old. Is that pretty and, typical all in all the vineyards? Are some older or? No, not all because in, at a certain point there were some producers that destroyed the walls. So, but it basically Doro was all like this. Yeah. Um, and then we have this amazing forest. Uh, so this is one of the old vineyards. Wow. Uh, you can see it's high density. All the work has to be done by hand. It's impossible to, to put the machine. 
Is that just about like two rows on each terrace or? You can have two or three, it depends. It depends of the, of the <laughs> inclination, you know? Here it's like two, but I love these details of the, of the stairs, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. And the, so we have been so lucky to be uh, restoring this, this, this property. Um, and, but what really makes different this property, it's this well, most, almost 50 hectares of forest native forest, Mediterranean forest, so be very diverse with cork trees, with pine trees, with, uh, I don't know, oak trees and whatever, um, that creates a, really a huge uh, mass of, uh, and really creates a cooler microclimate for the vineyards that are surrounded. And this is what makes very different the style of the wines from Pintage and Manuela. They are totally different. Mm -hmm. Even they are very close by each other, the, the, the vineyards, they are like two kilometers distance. That's it? But, <laughs> yes, but they are totally different on styles because here, because of this, this microclimate provided from, the, from this forest, it creates longer cycles, um, more humidity. Also, the soils here are a little bit richer in pintas mm -hmm. and character are more rocky, so it's more austere. Uh, soils and and like this we have very different styles uh, so just to uh, this are pretty beautiful style. this is so cool <laughs> to look at these old terraces it's just yeah, really but they've been rebuilding this now it's rebuilt and it's finished this this plantation yeah uh, and this was the year that was on George family 1838 wow and wow. this is the, so you can see it's all surrounding by the the, the forest that's and beautiful next <laughs> so do you and guys I here, here I have the, the plan that you can see here all the property uh, wow. so just to have an idea here it's all the terraces that we use for Manuela the, the wine that we will taste next so it's vineyards that were planted by George father uh, yeah. in the late 70s 80, early 80s so here we it's only five varieties because at that time there was a big study and a big uh, revolution in the Doro. Uh, in, they wanted to focus in only, because there was more than 60 varieties in the Doro, or even more. And the university and the, the, some companies, they wanted to focus uh, only in four, five varieties. So there was a big study to identify which varieties would be the best. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, they then, after I don't know how many years, but they, they decided that the best varieties in the door were Toriga Nacional, Toriga Fra Francesa, uh, Tinta Jorish, which is Tempranillo in Spain, mm -hmm. Tintucan, and Tinta Barroca. And so the vineyards that were planted after, after that, so in the 80s and 90s, majority, they were planted with these five varieties. Yeah. And, and that's why. That's one reason that when we started, we said it's, it's a pity because we have so many varieties. Why everybody's planting and doing the same blends, you know? Yeah. yeah. So that's why we were more focused in, uh, in, in the old vineyards. No, that makes sense. Um, but, uh, but Manuel, I don't know if you want to pass to the second line. Absolutely. Um, and then I'm just going to read off for, uh, from the chat again. Uh, Robin and Dave have kindly done some math for us and they're saying it's 170 acres. <laughs> okay, thank you. Now we know. <laughs> no. but, um, <laughs> for Manuela and for all the different vineyards, um, are you able to farm organically? Do you do any sort of sustainability? Are you all organic? Yes, we are organic. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we started with uh, sustainable agriculture mm -hmm. and now we are organic. We, we, we don't use herbicides, we don't use any pesticides. We use, I don't know, to say it in. in um, in English, but we use, uh, I don't know if you can say this, sexual confusion uh, yeah. with pheromones. Yes, we is call it the same thing? thing, sexual confusion. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to say <laughs> No, it's totally fine. This isn't, this isn't a network television, don't worry, you can kind of say what I mean. Okay, so, so, and this has been very efficient, even because we are lucky in the door that is, is because of the climate and the, the soil, it's very poor soils and very continental climate, as I was saying. It's yeah. very dry normally. So the rainfall here, the average rainfall we have here, it's about 500 millimeters. So it's, it's very little. Yeah. 
and we don't irrigate. So we, but, but, but the, we are lucky enough to have a lot of, of water underground. That's why also we don't irrigate because we want the, the, the new vineyards, because we want the roots to go deeper and find the water. Because that's how we have the, all these tributaries and small little rivers, because there's lots of water underground. So mm -hmm. we never irrigate, only in the, when we plant and the first year, because it's very warm during summer, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but then we 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 don't irrigate more. <clears throat> so in order for we we can't uh, spoil the vineyards. But no, <laughs> spoil. But the we know. But we know in the future and all with these climate changes and so on. We we know that probably uh, we we have to have Plan B. Right. So, so. we are building some uh, uh, water. Um, how do you say it? Containers? Uh, sure, you like a holding containers for the water and yes. or retaining. Uh, when the rain goes, yes, in, just in case if we need for, for some reason, but but for now anything, it's a dry farm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the Manuela, which is coming from this vineyard that we're looking at right now, which is very exciting. <laughs> uh, so this is, as you said, um, this is the sort of the, the main, the typical varietal, right? The blend, I should say. Yes, this is a blend of five, five varieties which are Toriga Nacional, uh, which is a very aromatic, it's probably the queen of our varieties and probably the most famous varieties because it's, it's, uh, has, it's very flowering. It has lots of violet notes and yeah. plum and cherry, like cherry notes. Um, but then it the, the, normally has very gentle tannins. Then Toriga Fran Francese, it's very beautiful to, to, to blend with Toriga Nacional because it has more uh it's more tense it has more uh, how do you say it nerves uh I don't Nerve. know. yeah okay sure. uh, has more acidity and mm -hmm. more more tannins mm -hmm. and when it's very ripe or it, 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 it has a good uh, phenolic ripeness mm -hmm. it has beautiful blackberries black cherries tastes yeah then the other right tita horish it's not as aromatic but as fantastic tannins, so it's very good for the backbone of, of this wine. Mm -hmm. And then on the uh, on the blend we have also Tinta Francisca, which is a very elegant, very delicate, very good on high acidity, uh, acidity mm -hmm. less concentrated on color, but it's fantastic for for aging for a long time. And Tinta Bocca, yeah. a little bit, but just a little bit. It is a deep, deeply, deeply colored. Um, Dan was Dan has a lovely tasting note here for us uh, in the notes. He's like, "This is a purple wine, brooding <laughs> but fresh, really tasty black fruit with great acid and rounded tannins." I think this oh, is really <laughs> uh, I think it's a wine that really explain, expresses Doro mm -hmm. in, uh, with all these fruit essences, but also some herbal flower notes from yeah. coming from the from the forest and the, and the wild bushes we have around the vineyards. And so I think it's, so it's a wine and also some earthy notes. And I think this is what I really love with Manuela wines because they are really authentic and really pure in terms of, of, of style. And they're they great. For, sorry. No, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, and they are great. They are really versatile. I think Manuela, it's a wine that, um, and we have seen on the, on the years that it's a wine that normally everybody enjoys it. It's, it's even the people that never tasted Doro or it's the first time they will taste it. And they don't know anything about the region or the grape varieties. They will enjoy it. And also the, the, even the critics or people that know a lot because it's a, it's a very charming wine. So it, and it's fantastic for pairing with many different dishes or even without any meal. It's, it's a wine that it's very easy to to just open the bottle and enjoy it. I think that, um, I, I would agree. I think it's very approachable, but there is a beautiful um, earthy savory quality to it that I just appreciate so much. Mm -hmm. um, I love that kind of like, that that foresty kind of herbal kind of, um, not vegetal, but just like, yeah, just organic note to it. It's really beautiful. Yes, but for us, all it's really important just um, to have not only monoculture, it's to have different spots of, of other, either olive trees or wild bushes or, or, or cork trees or whatever, to have the identity of the place. I think it's so important. 
Yeah. And that's why I think it makes different Manuela wines that, in that aspect, because it's involved with, with so much diversity. It's beautiful. Uh, which it's picture? Really cool. Oh, is this still Manuela then? Yeah. No, no, this is Pinto. <laughs> I was not remembering which was the next picture. So this is... <laughs> Andy takes beautiful rocks, you're seeing that. <laughs> So now we're back at Pintas because obviously we are yes. going to do that next. Yes, yeah, so this is Pintas character vineyard. So as I was mentioning before, um, we started with one single plot, which is only three hectares. And then step by step, we've been buying little vineyards we could uh, buy uh, close by Pintas. And we decided to make uh, another wine. It's not the second label in terms of, it's not a selection because sometimes people think that the Pintas character it's a selection of barrels on Pintage. No, it's not. It's Pintage, it's a single vineyard. And then Pintage character, it's a, a blend of five, five plots that we own mm -hmm. that surrounds Pintage vineyard. So it's not Pintage, but there's a character of Pintage ah. instead of it's all vineyards, it's a field blend. Uh, it's all planted in terraces, as you see on this image. Uh, high density, we have around six to 7,000 plants an hectare uh, on the stone walls. And, um, and the vinification of, of pintas and character, it's the same. It's all food trodden in lagares. Uh, so it's very yeah. traditionally very. made. So <laughs> and say that again in case people didn't catch that. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's foot trod in foot trod Yes. The lagares, which are these big sort of cement vats, correct? It's, it's not cement, but it's okay. granite. I granite. will show you. Yes, oh, okay, you. good. Yeah, oh, I'm excited to see them actually. Are they really old? Are the lagares themselves old or are they? Yes, yes. Yeah. Because when we bought this, this winery, it was a very old winery from, uh -huh. uh, yes, from the 19th century. It was 1800s. And wow. there was very old lagares that we rebuilt. Uh, so it's all in granite and schist. Ah. Fantastic. Yeah, that's that's more authentic than cement. Shame on me. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go to the harvest. So it it comes all Beautiful. on these cases, so twenty kilos, and we make a very hard selection of the grapes because you can imagine when we are working with field blends, we have, as I was mentioning, more than thirty varieties mm -hmm. um, or forty varieties. So even they 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 tend to ripe closer but some of them can be a bit green or some others can be too ripe and we have to select so always it's me and George that select the the grapes wow and here is the lagares so you can see here it's all wow. in granite uh, so it's a very okay. tiny winery it's still the same almost the same when we started uh, and we really love to ferment all in oh this is all me and George, but I was saying, so, so it's all fermented here on the lagares yeah. that we spread by feet um, uh, three, four times a day. Uh, How many people are treading at one time? Yes. So we have the major crush. Uh, it's the first time where as soon as the grapes uh, come, mm -hmm. uh, we normally have a group of 12 people to make the first cut. And this is really important to be uh, a lot of people to really to smash all the, 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 the skins mm -hmm. and all the, the seeds come out. And after it's very gentle, like you see here, it's only one person just to push the cap down. So, <laughs> the, so the, we do it very, very traditionally made. So for, for port wine, we have to extract more. So we put more people and more time. For, for our Doro Reds, it's, the first extraction is very important then it's very gentle either we do with only one person or we do by hand or even we introduced a, a, ro a robotic system that i don't have pictures here yeah. but, but but we but the, we, you're talking about the they're called literally um robo lagares yeah. aren't they uh -huh. yeah. yeah and they're just they're just um, mechanized they're basically like mechanized feet exactly have been created to help and this and this was really important this year, especially because previous years uh, yeah. we were just using if we need it or in, in case there was the la lack of people because uh, it has been very hard to find labor. Um, so 
in, in that coin we would use it but uh and this year because the covid situation we for us it was really important to have this this robotic system because yeah. we as you can imagine we didn't want it lots of people in the winery so we were a very small team and we we were we had like a loyal i don't know um uh, yet to 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 promise each other that we it was winery home wine you know right yeah to go to restaurants or any parties or whatever uh in order to to be able to finish the harvest so yeah. and this was really important and, and we were not crossing the teams so we, there was teams on the office a team in the winery and team of the, the viticulture yeah. and we were not crossing the people so we had different times and so and and it worked, but but we are a small company, so it's easy. It was easy to a little bit easier to manage that, but still, mm -hmm. um, I, I I definitely want to. Um, I we were talking about this a little bit earlier. I I'd, I'd love to have Sandra talk a little bit about how, in our day and age with COVID, how this is affecting. And I think harvest and making the wine. That's a great point. Um, there's a question really quickly about the fermentation process. Mm -hmm. um, is is all of the fermentation happening open air, open top, um, yes. and or do you put something over it? And mm -hmm. uh, what's is that typical for the for the Doro? Open open top fermentation. Yeah, so th this Lagares, it's very typical for the Doro, especially it was for producing port. So there's the um, majority of the Doro producers are they use the Lagares, but not for all the wines, you know, uh, but we do for, for exception of the Manuela that it's only food trod in two days and then ferments in tanks. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do a, a slightly different extraction with more uh, Delastage. So it's a different, slightly in the maceration post fermenting. The, the remaining wines are all fermented here in Lagares. So all open fermentation. Um, the advantage is that you can see we have a big contact between skins and mass, so we can very easily extract uh, more or less uh, by just putting more people or less people or and treading more with more intensity or less. Mm -hmm. And because normally we don't need because our grapes are so rich in color and tannins that normally we avoid to extract uh, a lot. A lot. For exception of the port, the port we have to because we have a shorter period uh, of fermentation. Yeah. So we we have to do it in four or five days very quickly, uh, to, and, and then we have to stop the fermentation. But so after finishing the fermentation for the reds, we we take the wine uh, on the valve downstairs, and we take the wine and then we press on the vertical press. I don't know if I have here image of the vertical press. No, I don't have. Oh. Yeah, that's okay. These are beautiful wines. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, no, no. It's great. It's great. I know. I was sort of. I sort of pushed it earlier, but um, I think that it is. Um, uh, but I have images on the video, so I will. Show oh you. yes. Oh yes, everyone. So it is. I just wanted to be respectful of your time. It is. It is one o'clock our time now. I think nine o'clock your time. PM, you guys. Nine o'clock PM. Isn't she wonderful? Um, if if you if you don't mind, she has a video um to share that I would love to see. So um. Can we can we watch that now and then if you have time and you want to stay on and answer other questions, but if not, I understand we can go ahead and but the video would be great if we wanted to see that right. Yeah, here. Let's see where it is. Uh, Andy read an article women and wine a tipping point Sandra is included on um, Johnson's Robinson's list of women wine <laughs> she admires. I was not aware of that. Thank you, Andy, for bringing that to our attention. <laughs> we should all read that you guys. Isn't this exciting. <laughs> Yeah, we for not knowing that ahead of time. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> I'm not seeing the. Let me see. If I have to close. But I think that yeah, I think. Um, Let me see. I'm so excited to to have you here and to have been able to uh, to have everyone meet you. Um, but I think one of the things that's so beautiful about it is the fact that you have such a, a rich culture and history. In, in, in the Douro and in Portugal. Um, for those for those of you who are with me on Wednesday, we are doing, I'm actually doing a little mini webinar on port. So we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about exactly what she was saying, how, you know, you have to treat the grapes differently during fermentation when you're making port than if you're making um, 
a, 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 a light wine, if you will, as, as opposed to fortified. Mm -hmm. But thank you, Kimberly. I'm glad you made it. They're beautiful wines, aren't they? Um, mm -hmm. These wines absolutely are, they're exquisite. Um, and I think that it's such a beautiful representation of uh, as as the the still wines of port are becoming more, um, people are getting into them so much more in the United States, which is great. Uh, I will just I will just share a small video because I yes. think it's uh, now I can do it. I was a bit troubled here. Oh, you're fine. I'm not an expert with this, so it's a very tiny video that you can see, and I think images explain much more than uh, talking. Yes, so I think that sounds just great. Minutes. Okay, and then we can talk a little bit more. Wait. Can you see it? It's very tiny. <laughs> uh, yes. How can I do it? Ah, I think it's working now. Yes. Working now? Perfect. Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. Did you take this video? All right. Did you make this video? Yes. Not myself. <laughs> Very talented. <laughs> this was pink as our dog. That name the, the wine. Look how steep that is. Wow. <laughs> this is a cork tree. There you go. You can see it's very hard. It's all and very exercise. Yeah. Schists, you see, it breaks very easily, and we are always building these walls to sustain the vineyards. Look at that. Treading, so it's literal foot treading. There it is. <laughs> Do you actually use a basket press like that? Yes. <laughs> oh. Wow. Beautiful. This is during winter. We also produce olive oil. So it's our olives. It's, we already finished the picking and it's fantastic. Olive oil. And this is our park lodge. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, so obviously um, Wine and Soul also makes port. So if anyone would like to pick up a bottle of uh, <laughs> Wine and Soul port for Wednesday, you guys. Beautiful. I heard, actually, I was just reading an article about um, that they just declared two back-to-back -back vintages for vintage yes, port. Yes, yes, Yeah, in 2017. That's really exciting. This is our terrace that oh we would God. love to have you. I can't wait. Yes. You guys, so <laughs> when we can travel again, I am doing a trip to Portugal. We are going here. Well, please come. <laughs> it's happening. It will happen. Gosh darn it. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you oh. so much for sharing that. That's so beautiful. No, oh my God. It's my pleasure. Yes, thank you. Um, I really appreciate it. I think that, um, thank you for taking the extra time to, to, to share that with us. And does anyone have any last minute questions? I probably shouldn't say that because we're over time, so I won't. <laughs> but thank you all so much for coming. And Sandra, thank you so much for being here. Um, everyone, if you have additional questions, you can always shoot me an email and I can sort of uh, send them back and forth to Sandra as well. Um, but in the meantime, thank you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening and, you and weekend. And thank can you. I, can I say something? Can yes, I, of course. All right. Am I off mute or am I? You You're off mute. mute. Okay. So I have had the pleasure of 
representing these wines for the Tavares family, for Sandra, for uh, Quinta de Chocopalia, and for Wine and Soul, as well as visiting this amazing property. And I'm going to start to cry because watching that video <laughs> just brought back so many Me beautiful too. memories. The property is as stunning as it is in the video. And um, that terrace to have lunch and wine tasting on is absolutely incredible. Um, the wines are beautiful. The property is absolutely stunning. The people who are involved in this are have their heart and soul into this, thus the name of it. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have not purchased these wines already, you need to get your butts over to High Time because <laughs> our boy Patty Quick, who knows Sandra, all three of these wines are there, as well as the Chocopalia, the Tinto mm -hmm. Blend, the Arintu, which we used to carry at LCA Wine. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely beautiful, and these wines need to be just illuminated with everyone. So no, thank, thank you, you. It's so good no, to see thank you. you. It's so great to see you, and I really miss you. I miss to visit you. you. Oh my God, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I'm, I, I think I do agree, everyone. Please listen to Andi. Go buy these beautiful wines. There, there's nothing better for the holidays while we're here at home. Just drink these wines. They will make you happy. <laughs> <laughs> they are joy in a bottle. Um, and so I think that that is far and away the best, the best recommendation I can give. So thank you, Sandra, oh, thank you. so much, so much, so much, so oh, much. Thank you. Everyone, please have wonderful, safe weekends being you know all very contained so we can get through all this with a little bit of wine <laughs> <laughs> yes so cheers chin chin cheers. everyone <laughs> thank you thank you very much